Welcome back to Ferocious Education, this is Ed. Today, we're going to be talking about a new ticker here, Microfast. I haven't talked about this one, so this is the first video in the series, but hopefully I'm going to be able to give you two intelligence parts, technical analysis, what I think about this one, and institutional buyers. So without further ado, let's jump right into this one. So Microfast. First off, I would like to go on towards the investor presentation because that's where all the major news or major information about this one is. And then we're going to dive towards news. If you'd like to skip towards the news, you can skip ahead and then the institutional buyers and try to see some of the SEC filings. But first off here, in terms of the company, the Pro Pharma company overview, I'm just going to zoom in here just for the people on mobile. You're able to see that their Pro Forma equity value is around $3 billion and their aggregate value is around $2.4 billion. Now, you might think, where did they get this kind of uh, valuation? So this is relating towards AV over 2025 estimated revenue multiple. So they're basically saying that the aggregated value is one on one with the revenue estimate of 2025. We're going to take a look in a bit where the estimates from 2020 to 2025 really look like. And in terms of this company, they mentioned that they are backed up by companies like BlackRock, Interprivate, Oshkosh, and Kosh. Now, on February 1st, 2021, they did a reverse merger with Tuscan, also known previously as THCB, and they signed that tentative agreement, and now they're merged as a reverse pack merger, and everything's all right. Now, in terms of this merger itself, it gave Tuscan Cash and Trust of around $282 million and a fully committed common stock pipe investment of around $540 million. This gave them around $800 million expected gross cash proceeds. And the intended to use of this one is manufacturing facility build outs in the US and Europe and fulfillment of customer demands and debt repayment. Now, in terms of the pro forma ownership, you have around 70% of that is the existing microvast shareholders, around 18% for pipe investors, 3% for SPAC founder shares, and 9% for SPAC shareholders. Now, there's different sponsors. For instance, this first one, the Tuscan Holding Core, the people that brought this pack. The CEO here has more than 40 years of entrepreneurship experience, previously founder and executive chairman of the board of Forum Merger Corporation, and the former CEO of Sydney Gas Operation. In Interprivate here, the CEO has 25 and more years of experience in private equity and M&A, founder of Interprivate and Landmark Valley Investments, and former member of Morgan Stanley M&A and Investment Core private equity teams. Interprivate is also listed as IPV on the Nasdaq market. Now coming on towards the CEO, and we're going to talk about that in a second, but he is the founder of Micro or Microvast, previously founder for water purification businesses Omex Environmental Engineering in 2000 and sold to Dow Chemical in 2006 with more than 50 years on return on investments or sorry 50 times return on investments in 5 years with a Bachelor of Arts from Southwest Petroleum University. Some of the investments highlights. Number one, differentiated product portfolio, serving the commercial vehicle and other high growth markets, leading fully owned and third party validated proprietary technology across the battery system. And number three, distinct vertically integrated business model enables faster product development, greater customization and margin advantages with field proven history of development, production and revenue generation. Number five is partnership with industry leaders with over than 1.5 billion dollars in contracted revenue through 2027 providing high visibility and highly attractive financial profile with potential for accelerating growth and stable margins number seven is world-class management team significant with cross-disciplinary experience and track record commercialization innovative technologies and some of the company overview here so they're a battery technology company, deliberately built technology for high performance and mobility, developed distinct technology powered competitive advantages and sustainable growth, and ready and well positioned to lead the market when the world accelerates on a path towards electrification. So micro vast at a glance. So quick here, you're able to see 
that they have around 28,000 battery systems in operation, 19 countries and 160 cities where the products are operational, and 100 or 1,800 total employees, and around 500 of those are in research and development, more than 550 patents, 3.8 billion miles operational distance covered with no major incidents uh, relating towards safety, and around $1.5 billion contracted revenue through 2027. It's also the number one vertically integrated, fully owned proprietary technology portfolio. And in terms of the 2020 estimated revenue is $100 million, compared to a 2025 estimated revenue of $2.3 billion. This is your major, I'd say one of the only red flags relating towards this one, is your revenue in 2020 was estimated to be $100 million. And you're coming around and telling people, well, we're actually valued around $2.3 billion because we estimated that in five years, we're going to go from $100 million to $2.3 billion. So our market cap should be $2.3 billion. So that's a very, very dangerous thing to think about. And let's say they somehow fall in a bit short relating to where, towards that, they're going to be in trouble. And the next thing here is established global presence provides solid foundation of growth. So taking a look from 2006 all the way to 2022, the last one begins battery production in Clarksville, Tennessee. And then before there in 2021, begin battery production in the area of Berlin, Germany. In 2020, sign purchase agreement of two gigawatt facility in Clarksville, Tennessee. Now, in terms of the basic battery solutions, they have some for commercial vehicles, including trucks, light duty vans, buses, trains, port trucks, and mining and speciality vehicles. And then you have passenger vehicles, energy storage solutions, battery components, and etc. Now, in terms of the large addressable market, they're talking relating towards the EV industry and how it's supposed to be continuing exploding. In 2025, adjacent market is estimated to be around $45 billion, uh, around 34% CAGR for passenger vehicles. Energy storage solutions is around 21% growth CAGR and consumer electronics around 7% CAGR in terms of growth. The next here is Microvast being the best in-class battery cell technology. So what customers care about relating towards buses, life cycles and others. Now, on there, we're able to see some of Microvast's uh, basically advantages compared to a leading passenger vehicle BEV. So currently, 20% greater range at around 370 miles from one charge compared to 300 miles, faster, faster charging time around 12 minutes for 70% state of charge compared to 30 minutes at 60% state of charge. Lifespan around 3,000 cycles to around 80% retention, and compared to the leading one is around 1,000 cycles to 80% retention. In terms of lifetime mileage, this one is anticipated to be having around 1 million miles lifetime through mileage, while this one here is around 270,000 miles lifetime throughput mileage for the leading passenger vehicles uh, technology. And moving on from there, you're able to see some of their vertically integrated uh, solutions going on from advanced battery components to cells, to modules, to packs and established in-house manufacturing capacity. Now, they're also taking a look in terms of contracted pipeline up to 2025, which provides significant revenue visibility. Total identified opportunity is around $5.9 billion. Total probability weighted pipeline is around $4.1 billion. And total contracted revenue in pipeline through 2027 is around $1 billion to $1.5 billion. And you get to see here in 2020, this is where we're talking about the $100 million. And you get to see as they go on to 2021, that's 230 billion, 230 million, my bad. 2022, around $448 million, 751 on 2023. And 2024 is around $1 billion and 80 million. 2025 is around $1.462 billion dollars now this is supposed to be the contracted revenue so i'm not sure why this one here is not saying the 2.3 billion they were talking about but i'm guessing this is a different metric this is contracted revenues i guess versus total revenue even though the 2020 estimated was seen as 100 million dollars in revenue so that might actually be a little bit of an error or they're talking perhaps on 2026 i'm not exactly sure in terms of this here and in terms of revenue by segment, you get to see here that the 2025 is adjusted to 
four billion dollars and i'm guessing this is relating towards other than other forecasted revenue and contracted revenue they've added here into commercial vehicles battery components and energy storage although here's one thing that i'm taking a look at this is in 2021 estimated is 230 here's 230 448 for 2022 460 the numbers change a little so i'm not exactly sure relating towards this one but apparently anticipated in around 2030 they're going to be reaching 6.8 billion dollars adjusted ebi tda they're anticipating that 2021 would be positive and they're on forward it will increase exponentially and they do compare themselves in different margins but i don't think that uh, i should go through this today because i mean it's already gone and you can just take a look at it but basically they take a look in terms of revenue ebi tda with other companies including nikola neo and tesla and it goes on here towards aggregate values in terms of ebi tda and a nice chart relating towards uh, the aggregate value to 2025 but i'm not going to go through that in terms of the latest news relating towards this one we see a few so i'm going to just mention a few and then dive into others so microvast and eversium to jointly drive urban commercial vehicles electrification and then they listed their stock under mvst on the nasdaq market after a spac reverse merger microvast ema hq gets a visit from the vice chancellor and german federal minister of finance olaf scholz and Microvast and Gassen partners to accelerate the transition to zero emission transportation. And Microvast expands to French e-bus markets. They also have Microvast Governor Lee and Commissioner Rolf announced company to establish manufacturing, manufacturing facility in Clarksville, Tennessee. So that's a little bit of a view on some of their news. So this one here relating towards the last one on July 29th, 2021. So top notch battery solutions for Eversum for the next generation of electrical commercial vehicles. Potential supply volume forecast is anticipated to be around 100 million euros. And so this one here, they do talk a little bit about it but i think that's the highlights and we should leave it there and microvast and gas and partners to accelerate transition to zero emission transportation so this one here strategic partnership for the next generation for full electric and hydrogen powered version of skateboard road truck platform stated art modular battery concept with a variety of cell chemistry with long-term collaboration with a volume forecast of more than 1.5 gigawatt hour in the next five years and up to 29 gigawatt hour until 2031. The other one here, Microvast expands into the French e-bus market. Expansion in the French e-bus market with local bus OEM Safara. Framework supply of lithium ion battery systems and three year agreement with product delivery starting in March 2021 and potential further collaboration in fuel cell and retrofit bus businesses. And a bit of on the, on the CEO here, there's nothing much than what we've read before. Um, I think it's the exact same copy paste. So we're going to dive a little bit deeper in the CEO at a later date. And in terms of the applications, they do have apparently a vast uh, information relating towards that, whether commercial vehicles, energy storage, passenger vehicles, or consumer electronics. Now, in terms of the major backing up institutions, you get to see that Wu Yang, 27th of Jun or sorry, July, that's around 28.3% ownership, and Ashmore Investment Management has 7.8% ownership in this as of the 2nd of August. And in terms of the SEC filings, there's not much to talk about that we haven't done already in the presentations. But if you would like to see more contents like this, make sure to click the subscribe button on the bottom right corner and leave notifications on. Also, don't forget to drop a like to this video. And if you would like to join our Discord, totally free in the description below. And let's move on towards technical analysis. In terms of a technical analysis perspective, we see that the 10 SMA is currently above the 30 MA, which is a very bullish thing, and the price point is above the 50 SMA. On the 80X, we're sitting at 4287. So on the 4287, you need to be very careful once it hits 45, because that's where you might start seeing a pullback, and that would be a very dangerous level. And in terms of the MACD, you're starting to see things cooling down. It could be because it's more relating towards coming in on a Friday, but if it does continue on a little bit diving or at least even just stabilizing, we might be on to a negative reversal. But in terms of another push in momentum is what you're looking for for this move to be continuous. In terms of stochastic fast and stochastic slow, both are momentum volume indicators. 
you get to see that there might be another leg up for this one, but they're currently stabilizing as there's no momentum in either directions really at this level. But on the moving average bands and the Bollinger bands, both are volume momentum indicators. You're expecting this one to trade approximately around 1274 on the top and 1042, but the entire moving average band and the Bollinger bands are moving upwards, indicating a bullish move. In terms of Fibonacci retracements and the reason why I'm using this one is because high frequency traders use it, 1215 seems to be a very strong resistance above there 1335. The support levels are 1121, 1055, 989, 907, and 775. In terms of a price line action, you're seeing significant support level coming down to around 1193. Below there, 1149. Below there, 1096. Going down to 1057, 1029, going down to around 996, 976, going down to 935, 893, 855, going down to around 817, 794, and 775. Resistances around 1214, 1230, and around 1291, then 1235. Now, in terms of analyst recommendations, I only have one here on tip ranks. This is from Adam Jones from Morgan Stanley with a price target initiated at $6 with a position off sell. Now, this person's success rate is around 55% with an average return of around 12%. Comes to the question to Ed, what do you think about this one? Well, honestly, if I was to give an unbiased opinion, the big alert here is their massive push from sales from $100 million from 2020 all the way to $2.3 billion by 2025. And their estimate is around 2 point or 123 times higher than their current 2020 estimates. So that's a little bit of a red flag for me. And even if we were to talk, okay, let's say $200 million in 2021, that's still around 11 times higher than their current evalu aggregate valuation. So in my own opinion, I do think that it can still move on and you can still make a lot of money out of volume movements. But if you're in it for the fundamentals, there is a little bit of gap in the fundamentals that it does definitely need some time to prove. Uh, companies don't come out and say, okay, we're going to make $3 trillion in a few years. And so that's our valuation coming in now. But the retail and investors in general usually see whether that's actually achievable or not. And if it is, then usually these things are priced in. So you really got to think about this one, whether it's plausible to reach this valuation or not. That's your money and that's your opinion. What do you think about the sticker? Make sure to mention down in the comments below. Subscribe and leave notifications on and have a wonderful day. Now, if you're still here on this video, make sure to drop down below and join our Discord. We have a lot of different things going on, including, for instance, members that gives picks for free. It's not pump and dumps. We just things we think about, swings, etc. We also have really exciting bots. Uh, you can actually use those ones. For instance, we're just testing out this bot, for instance, that gives you Fibonacci resistance points, activities, etc. And we have a bunch of free things, totally free. We run on tips here, and you can ask me questions, suggest stocks, etc. It's a really nice community that has been growing up uh, very fast at a very good rate and it's totally free if you would like to join that one feel to do so in the description below and have a wonderful day